Rima and have to stay in one of those homes that you designed or all those buildings. <clears throat> but uh, like Sumesh said, we do offices and uh, not really homes. So, of course, our clients can't afford that those kind of budgets to say that this is luxury. But we've kind of redefined what luxury is. And when you get into an office, uh, we say luxury of what? It's not about just the aesthetic. It's about different elements in the office. It's not materiality or you know how you perceive things or what, what does the office look like. We talk about more about deeper things. When we say deeper, we talk about psychological and behavioral aspects of uh, how to how does you, everyone, react or respond to different environments in the office? So, I'll take you through some bit of Gyan and not so much more about the projects that we've done, but I'll take you through some of the philosophies that we adopt and what we define as, what I'd like to say, redefine luxury. It's not just about, like I said, the aesthetic. Of course, Siba, that was brilliant stuff. But like I said, our clients can't afford that kind of luxuries. We don't have the luxury of that kind of luxury. Which one do I press? Which way is that? Like I said, uh, <clears throat> when we say luxury, it's it's different now that through the through times, how the office environment or how the office landscape has changed. So, from the office where we used to have enclosed offices for everyone, and everyone thought that having an enclosed space, I feel like I'm the boss, or someone else has a bigger office. Uh, is, is higher up in the hierarchy. That changed to open office culture. It became linear desking. Or before that, it used to be cubicles and then got into very linear kind of desking. But what, what are we talking about the office now, which is pre post-pandemic? This is all pre-pandemic that we had offices that looked like, you know, rows and rows of workstations and, you know, quite, quite mundane and boring, actually. So. And I'm talking about larger formats of offices and larger floor plates. So today the average size of a floor plate for any, and I'm referring to technology companies, where which is the largest uh, workforce in, in our country, right? So uh, the employers are huge and, you know, some organizations have over about 100,000 employees and so on and so forth. So their, their offices could be, yes, Sumesh, uh, 5 lakh and 10 lakh square feet. But uh, the floor plates vary from average size, or I'd say a minimum size of a floor plate would be about 30,000, and average about 50,000 square feet as a floor plate uh, for an organization, for, for IT companies. Those are most efficient and effective uh, kind of floor plates. So how does one deal with all of that? Post-pandemic, and we were all used to kind of, sorry, which one is it? Which way? This way? This one? This one? And sorry, I'm going to talk about technology as well, but I'm pretty bad at this, obviously. This one, right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Thanks. During the pandemic, two years, at least I spent my time working like this. I'm sure most of y'all also had similar postures uh, while y'all were working. But to come back to work has become a challenge for most of these large organizations. And I was talking to one of my clients and said, 
we've introduced a phase one of com coming back to the office. So phase one meant 25% of the employees should come back to work. 5% came back. They opened up the second phase and they said 50% should come back. 7% were in the office. So what's happening here? People are used to working like this now, right? So they don't want to come back to, to the office. They're used to this. Some people have gone to their hometowns, they're, they're chilling there. But now with schools opening up, people will have to still come back. But more importantly, why don't they come back? They're used to this kind of working. And believe me, this has worked well for them. They, so they say, if I could do this for two years, why do I really need to come back? So organizations are having a large, huge challenge in getting these people and employees back to work. Do they really need to come back to work? Yes, it's much more productive uh, when they're all within the office. I realized that I'm back from early work after two years. And I know it's more uh, effective and productive. But I'm really struggling. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, if you can uh, help me with that. It's okay, here's uh, a project that we did, and we designed this pre-pandemic times. So, there's this one client who said, we have about a thousand employees that we'd like to accommodate within a, a, an office. It happened to be one floor plate. This floor plate is about 100,000 square feet, incidentally. But, so if you see the layout, and it's pretty dense what we had done and it accommodated close to 750 individual work desks okay for about thousand employees we we done extensive studies of the way they were currently working and we realized that we introduced technology to map the space utilization and we realized that at any given point of time there were no more than 70 percent of the people within the office so some people were on leave, holiday, and you know, traveling on work. So we said, let's put 750 work desks as against their strength of a thousand employees. But we introduce about 60 or 70 alternate work workstations where people could come in and work. What changed during the pandemic is people realized that you know policies changed. So they said one of the departments will not come back to work at all, ever. There will be hybrid working. So there will be option of coming into the office at some point or not even coming or working from home and working from the office. So what we developed is something that we call free address. So nobody owns a desk. You come in in, in the morning, you can pre-book where you want to sit. You don't own a desk. You, you don't say that I've come here and that's my desk or I can sit here 365 days. We created what we call neighborhoods. So if you see that layout, it's spread. Each of these neighborhoods are self-sufficient and self-contained units. So they are all self-sufficient and self-contained uh, kind of spaces which house different kind of work settings. Now when we say work settings, if you see what we had done earlier, and this used to be pretty much what was happening pre-pandemic times, where these were rows of workstations, there were some collaborative of, uh, spaces here, some meeting rooms that happened there. But if you look at what happened from here until there, you see the density has changed completely. So it's become much lighter, much more cleaner, which is what we call more luxury, luxury of space. Now, not just luxury of space, we said the employees are given the luxury of choice. You can choose where you want to sit. Now, if you analyze an entire day of an employee, there are different tasks that he or she would do. 
So there's focused work, there's heads down work that you would do for probably a couple of hours of the day. There's interaction or collaboration between say me and Mohit or, or, or Sumesh. There could be a larger kind of collaboration. There could be a seminar, there could be a lecture, there could be training areas. So if you categorize them and break the office space up into providing those environments which, will, which then in turn would make the employee more productive. So you don't really need to have a desk. You need the desk only for heads down work. You, have crea you create different settings to take those different tasks. So that's what we did and that's how we came up with those kind of layouts. Next please. So that's what uh, the layouts were pre-pandemic times. You see it's fairly dense. There's about 750 uh, workstations on, on that. Next please. And if, if we zoom into one of those areas there, you go next. That's what it changed to. So it became much uh, lighter and less denser. Next please. And what we also then introduced is larger spaces for dining and cafeteria spaces. Now again, uh, cafeteria spaces, again, uh, real estate is not cheap. Cafeterias were utilized only for a couple of hours of the day. So these cafeterias now really become effective and turn into training areas. You also had these kind of booth seatings which turned into meeting spaces, of course not enclosed, but meeting spaces. These also could be used for heads down work. If somebody wanted to have a choice of, uh, of a workplace in different environment, you could take your laptop and sit anywhere in the office or for that matter, even into this uh, space then. Next please. And you see how different a workstation or the office environment looks now. So you see that linear desk, that still remains. You still need that space for working. But beside that is a small little collaborative space. A couple of people can huddle together, have a quick huddle, come back to work. All of these, and then some of these workstations that you will notice are different from these. These are height adjustable tables. So from an ergonomic perspective, they could be adjusted. The tabletop could be adjusted from a more wellness perspective, right? Next, please. Go ahead. Next. So if you take another one of these areas and a typical neighborhood, which we call, this was one of the neighborhoods. Next, please. You see how that changed completely. Yeah, it's much lighter. Now, what, what you see here is what we introduced. This was an outcome of the pandemic. We changed the brief into making this like a business class lounge, like an airport. So when we say hybrid, there are different formats of hybrid uh, culture. So every organization has different policies. So we could call hybrid as coming for a few days of the week and the rest working from home. Or you could say, I can come in for a few hours and not go back. So let's say an employee could uh, drop his child to school and he's close to the office. I'll come in for a couple of hours and then go back, pick my child up and go home. So there is a need for a work space for that employee. So these kind of spaces started to emerge. So these are like business class lounges where somebody could come work for a couple of hours and then go back and not occupy a, a desk. So that's what the business class lounge looked like. So again, within that also different formats of sit, uh, settings of work workplace. There's a uh, high, high desk. There are these kind of enclosures. No, not complete enclosures, but higher acoustically treated sofas uh, which encourage people to work out of they could be individual or they could be couple of people also again those kind of diner booths also were created which are ac completely acoustically treated there 
next stage. So, <clears throat> again, now coming back to the pre-pandemic times, and I'll show, give you some examples of how things have changed and how, how they've emerged. So, this this is an office that we've done for Compass. Uh, this was pre-pandemic time, so this is a regular reception space. You enter, you have the branding, you've got the logos that are all happening, a small little waiting area, and then you see glimpses of the office within that. Next please. Or another one, that's the reception area of a, of a large uh, technology company, NVIDIA. That's about a half a million square feet, but again, representative of the volume of space that got created, but very typical. You enter, there's a reception, there's a waiting space, and you enter into the office. Next, please. Whereas, post-pandemic, this is what we're doing now. So there's no reception. There's no greeter. You're coming into the office, into a large sculptural space. So you have a, a freestyle, you know, a suspended sculpture that we've created there. There's space for people to actually sit around it. You, I've seen when I've entered this space, I've seen people working here as well. So, you know, and a kind of a waiting area here. So, the office landscape has completely changed. There's no reception anymore. It's all tech-based. You've, you've booked a room, you've, you've told, uh, you know, who you want to visit is there, he'll come and receive you. Next, please. Oh, that's another format where you come in and you're entering into a kind of a bar or a uh, lounge space or a coffee bar. And then you've got the technology wall there, you've got meeting spaces there, you've got a space for some sculpture that's happening. So it's, it's no longer what you saw earlier as receptions where you went, there's a desk, the waiting area, and you move it. Go ahead. Similarly, some amount of collaboration areas or, or breakout spaces that, that used to be done uh, typically in earlier times, or earlier means pre-pandemic times, but uh, recreation spaces uh, where you had t table tennis, uh, foosball, but you still could work. Even then, back then, we were providing these spaces where you could really work out of there. We also created these, what we like to call work cafes. So to reduce the load on actual cafeteria spaces, you know, you had smaller uh, spaces that you could go to where, where you could have tea, coffee and so on. But similarly, some more uh, of the collaborative spaces. Now they've become like this, where they're more oriented to make people work. It's no longer just recreational, but it could be recreational with more uh, emphasis on working. So you, you still had the, the, the lounge uh, furniture there, but also the backs were raised so that you get another layer of uh, seating there and you could have technology that kind of enabled you to have a video conference. Some more examples of what we're doing now as collaboration spaces. Again, this was what we used to do earlier. So rows and rows of workstations or even height adjustable workstations. This is what it looks like now. So again, you've got the flexibility of higher tables as well as lower lower desks. And you notice the density, how, how it has changed. And those were sim the, the similar offices. Uh, go ahead. Or even like that. So you see how the generous space that is available now around all of these workstations. And I'm going to hurry this up, Sumesh, I know don't, don't look at the uh, <clears throat> We also like to say, not just about space, it's more about experiences of how do we experience the office environment. Next, please. And like I mentioned earlier, that's one of our employees who could actually, you know, that's, that's the plan of one of the offices that I, I showed. And you could actually choose where you want to sit. So you come into the office, there's a screen, 
You can see where your colleagues are. If, if I don't want to sit next to Sumesh, I don't like him. I'll, I won't go there, I'll sit there. Or, you know, Vivek, he's here. Okay, let's hang out together and we'll work from there. So you could actually choose where you, you wanted to work on that particular day. Next, please. You could also do room bookings. So if you had a meeting, you could book the meeting room. Again, this is all tech enabled. So if you book the meeting room for a time slot, of say half an hour or an hour and you said we're going to be eight people there so you booked it earlier the air conditioning system would come on 15 minutes before the lights would come on accordingly it would send a signal to the the fnb areas so you could have food served depending on time of the day snacks would be there for that many number of people so again it's it's all technology based next please and again, AR, VR, enabled spaces, I, I know I'm going to hurry this up. Go ahead. The biggest thing in India is food. We're all foodies. All the employees want food. Okay, it's a big thing. So even I've, I've seen a lot of uh, HR people who I've met who said, the first question that people ask is, what kind of food do you serve in the office? Right? So food is a big thing. And now if you give a different level of experience to the employee that I can order my food on the app okay there's a large cafeteria imagine thousand employees everyone rushing at that same one in within that one hour slot queues and queues of uh, to take your food this is you've ordered it it's lying there sitting there grab go and sit so again creating different experiences making the, the employee more efficient and feel much better in the environment those are those are what we like to say luxuries next please here's the gyan okay so neurodiversity so i read somewhere diversity equity should not be equity it should be equality and inclusivity so Somebody needs to get that right. It's uh, equality, not equity. So when we talk about inclusivity in the office environment, I work differently. I respond to an environment differently than what you would or you would. Okay. So each one of us has different neurodiversity levels. Okay, which we call either. And again, this is a statistics that if you don't address neurodiversity, one-fifth of your employees will walk away. Next, please. So, there's hypersensitive and hyposensitive people. or These are the different categories of neurodiversity. So, in a hypos hypersensitive environment, which is like Mohit, he would like to do heads down focused work in an enclosed area right whereas Sumesh he's a hyposensitive person his personality and heads down work he wouldn't mind doing in the open right so he would be most productive in that kind of environment similarly if you break down the different types of work that you do in, in, in the, through the day, you create these different environments that stimulate or make the employees more productive. Next please. Here's an example of what we're doing for a customer. This is again a typical pre-pandemic kind of a situation of an office layout and that's the post-pandemic way of doing it. So you see different, you see a variety of work settings that have been introduced so you see different work settings that have been created there you see this that comes in which is a different typology of workstation so again these colored um, work desks they are high high tables or either height adjustable so if someone wanted to go onto them they could uh, use that as a different setting next please go next so if I zoomed into that, go previous please, thank you. So if you see this, that's rows and rows of workstations. And if I look at the next slide, that's how it changes into a much 
more um, luxurious space right but what we've introduced is a space that takes care of neurodiversity now again neurodiversity is I mean something like ADD right uh, not many people will come up and own up that I've got this as a deficiency or, or, or that's uh, my kind of personality so we can't deal with that across the board so what we do is we create certain spaces where you could go if you wanted to and work out of there so this is one such type of a sensory kind of a space that we've created next please so that's a high focus sensory workspace and you see different work settings that have been created into that next please that's an image of what it would look like again different work settings also it's not just rows and rows of workstations but the environment is completely different now when we say this is a high focus sensory so these are individual like uh, business class chairs where you could sit enjoy the view and still work out of there you could sit on these chairs furniture is available where you can sit for six hours eight hours and comfortably sit there now this person may not want to sit there he would want to come probably there or even in, in this, this kind of a booth now when we say sensory this place would have music this place would have different aromas as well so you kind of stimulate them with uh, the different senses. Next, please. And again, uh, another example. Go ahead, please. Now, if we look at the bottom part, and again, see how the layout changes. And next, please. And that area became a high focus, what we like to call as a quiet car. Next. So again, high in terms of acoustics, so enclosed cubicles, extremely quiet. So these are super quiet areas. So everything here in, in this setup is highly acoustic. So right from the ceiling, from the ceiling to the floor to, to even the envelopes of the workstations. Next. Keep going. And that's how the, the entire layout then looks. So again, our idea of luxury is to provide all of these. So meeting room bookings, food automation, hybrid, so on and so forth. And what we like to define luxury as an experiential value of high performance corporate architecture. Thank you.